Hello. I'm making this video to be sort of an introduction to Rust. Um, I'll be talking about variables, constants, shadowing, and also be displaying some command line um, commands from Cargo that you can use to get set up with Rust and start off your first projects and whatnot. So let's start with that. Let's create a new Rust project using Cargo. To do that, you do use Cargo new, and I want to call this project uh, my variables. Doing that, we can cd into my variables. Uh, and if you have Visual Studio Code, you can do code dot, and it will open your uh, my variables folder in Visual Studio. So right off the bat, you see that Cargo created a folder called source with a main.rs inside, initiated a git repository with a git ignore, and it created this Cargo file, which has a package header. Um, my variables, uh, it's the name of your package, it tells the version of your package, it tells the author of your package, and it has the addition. My name is Dan. I'm going to change the author name to Dan. If yours is incorrect, you can also change it. And below here, you would have a list of dependencies. In this case, we don't have any dependencies, but if you wanted to add some dependencies to your project, which I guess I'll talk about in a later video, uh, you can do so by listing them below here. Uh, so let's head to main.rs. You see that you have a default hello world pro, uh, function. Uh, main. Let's replace this. I want to keep the function main, but I don't want to print hello world. What I want to do right now is show you variables. By default on Rust, variables are immutable. And you declare variables by using let the variable name and the value that it's binded to it. So what, what do I mean by immutable? Immutable. Uh, what I mean by immutable is that if I wanted to change the value of x, suppose x equals 6, um, I wouldn't be able to do that. So if I go to my terminal, let me resize this, and, here, and if I run cargo check, which is a command that com tries to compile your application to check for any compiler errors, you will see that I get an error saying that I cannot assign twice to immutable variable. What this is saying is, hey, your variable is immutable. You cannot assign it a different variable like this twice. Okay. Uh, to not have this problem, what we want to do, so let me just for completion say, cannot do that. What we want to do is we want to make x a mutable variable. And we do that by, I'll call this x1, oops, by using the mut keyword before your variable name. So I could then assign this, x, uh, assign this 5, and then I could use x equals 6. Sorry, x1 equals 6. So let me just print. I'm going to print this value. Uh, I'll say immutable x. And this is a placeholder for, for the print macros. You don't really have to know what a macro is right now. I'll probably talk about that in another video. And you can use. Uh, you can then specify that your placeholder should be replaced with x when printing to the command line. Um, let's do the same here. In this case, it's a mutable variable. And let's print it before and after. Let's go back to our terminal. Let's do a cargo. Instead of doing cargo check now, I'm going to do a cargo run. What cargo run does is it compiles and it runs our program. Okay, so doing cargo run, we get immutable x, a mutable x, 
and our mutable x with its value changed, so reassigned. Now, in uh, other programming languages, you have the concept of constants, and that concept also exists in Rust. So right now you might ask yourself, what's the point of having a constant if you have an immutable variable? And the reason that we have the concept of constants in Rust is because even though a variable is uh, immutable, you still have the chance that its value will change during runtime. How can we change the value of a variable? We can change it with the concept of shadowing. So suppose I want to then, um, I have this value x, and I want to change this value, even though it is an immutable variable. What I can do is I can kind of redeclare the variable x to a different value. To a different value. So in other programming languages here, you might get an error saying that x has already been assigned, but in Rust, you won't get that error because you're using the concept of shadowing. So if I were to reprint x after shadowing, um, you will get, I'll do cargo run again, you get that even the immutable variable was changed. I'll just redeclare this to be x1. Um, great. So it is because of this that we have also the concept of constants. So um, constants to declare a constant, you use the keyword const. Uh, constants are generally declared uh, in uppercase, so I could call this a let's call this a constant. And and then you have to annotate its um, data type. Its data type uh, can be suppose an integer with 32 bits, and and then you assign its value. So I'll assign uh, 100,000. Okay. So right now, if I print, I'll copy this. And I'll say constant. Let's just rename this to be a a const. A const. Um, and we print the a const. If you run it on the terminal, you will get immutable, mutable, mutable, immutable, and your constant value. So once again, constants and immutable variables are different in the sense that constants cannot be shadowed. So with constants, you have the guarantee that your value will not change during runtime. So if I try to, if I try to shadow my a const variable, suppose I want to assign it 200,000. If I then cargo check this, a const redefined here. So you get the error that you would usually expect in other programming languages when you try to reassign a variable. So yeah, that's about it. In summary, um, in Rust, variables are immutable by default. An immutable variable cannot have its value reassigned. Uh, if you want to make your variables mutable, meaning they can have their values reassigned, you use the MUT keyword uh, right after let and before your variable name. By doing this, you can then reassign your variables as you normally would. However, immutable variables can still be changed by redeclaring the variable, and this concept is of redeclaring the that an immutable variable to change its value. It's called shadowing. Um, if you don't want to be able to shadow a variable, you can declare it as a constant. Constants have to be annotated with their data type. Uh, standard constant names are all in uppercase. And aside from that, in the terminal, we talked about a couple of commands. The first one we did was cargo new and your project name. This creates a new Rust program. Another way that you can create a new Rust program is by simply creating a file, call it main.rs. 
and then run it with rust c main.rs. There isn't really a reason for you to do that, just I would just recommend you use cargo because it manages any dependencies that you would get in bigger projects and it just it's just better practice. Uh, Sets from new, we also used uh, cargo check. Cargo check, what it does is it uh, compiles your code without creating uh, an executable file for it. So you'll see that right here we have a target folder. In the beginning of the video, if you go back, uh, you'll notice that we only had source, git ignore, and uh, this cargo full, uh, file. After running check, we, uh, we created the target folder, but we didn't create an executable file. And what the executable file does is another version, another way to run uh, programs is to do to run this executable. So I can go to target, debug, my variables. This is a Unix executable file. And if I run it, you'll get the exact same thing we got when we did cargo run. Okay, so what cargo check does is it doesn't create this variable, uh, this file. It just uh, compiles to check for any errors. If you do want to compile and create the file, you can use cargo build. If you uh, want to build and run at the same time, you use cargo run. This method is used uh, to run files if you just if you're just using Rust C. Okay, because Rust C, what it does is it creates this executable file, and then you can just go to your folder and run it. Okay, so yeah, I think that will be it for this video. Hopefully it helped you out. Oh, actually, before I end this video, uh, one last file we, we were created besides target and debug. We, you don't really have to care about these. These are just so that the uh, Unix file can be executed. Is the cargo lock. What it does is uh, here you have a list of all the dependencies that are being used uh, by your program in that build. So that um, so that your program can more easily uh, get these dependencies and just run them. So if uh, suppose you're using the random uh, dependency to create generate random numbers, and they release an update, your cargo lock will make sure they will still using the random um, dependency version that we imported into the project initially and that it was last built with. So yeah, I think now that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.